What's up everyone, I'm back again with a long overview part 2 of the Lab Writer series. Today I'm talking to Adam Design Labs and if that sounds good, stick around. So at the time of making this video, Trinidad and Tobago is experiencing our second wave of coronavirus and we need to be careful more than ever right now. You need to ensure to always wear your mask when you go out, you need to ensure to practice social distancing and wash and sanitize your hands as often as you possibly can especially when you're out in public. Right now, it's our duty to ensure that we keep our friends, family, and our society in general safe. So please be careful. So every day we make observations of the world around us, and our brain tries to take those observations and make sense out of it. It tries to get plausible reasons as to why it is something is occurring. So in some way, form, or another, we're always in our mind trying to figure out what does it all mean. Plan and design labs are pretty much the same thing. We make observations, we try to make sense of it, and then we test it. Now once again, this video is geared mainly towards CSEC and CAPE examinations in the Caribbean. Can't stress this enough, you've got to make sure and talk to your teachers first. Get their feedback on how they want this written up. They may have different marking criteria than I may express in this video, and it's important to always get their feedback before you continue. Now if, that's, if you're still here with me, let's move forward. Moving along, this is a sample mark scheme for a typical plan design lab. And as usual, you can pause here, or you can find a link for the resources in the description below. So we start off by learning how to make a hypothesis. Now, using a real-world example, doctors and scientists the world over right now are researching ways to help stop the coronavirus pandemic. And this all starts by making observations about the virus. So take this sample observation. A scientist noticed that in a population of people suffering from the coronavirus, not every person was infected, even though they shared the same communal water supply. He observed that people who were near infected persons, however, would acquire the disease shortly after. So, how do we formulate some hypotheses from these? Well, what is a hypothesis to begin with? Firstly, a hypothesis is a statement, not a question, that attempts to explain what you observed. It should be clear, concise, give a potential cause or correlation, and it should be testable. Now, testable means that you can come up with methodology to verify your hypothesis and not just attribute it to something or someone without any kind of explanation. The following are some potential hypotheses that you may have come up with. Coronavirus is not transmitted by water. Coronavirus is transmitted by saliva droplets from an infected person to an uninfected person. It's important to note that a hypothesis can be proven wrong, and that's okay as well. In science, we often know what something is by figuring out what it isn't. So for example, coronavirus is not transmitted by saliva droplets from an infected person to an uninfected person. So how do you get your aim? Let's take our second hypothesis. Now your aim should come from the hypothesis and include elements from the method. So if you want to see if coronavirus is transmissible by saliva, one thing we can do is observe if the coronavirus can survive in saliva to begin with. So, our aim could be to determine the survivability of coronavirus in saliva. So now that you've seen a present day example, let's scale it back to something a little bit simpler. Take a look at the following observation. Mia noticed that when she went fishing, the closer she was to the riverbank, the more worms she unnoted. She also noticed that more worms were found below the soil surface rather than close to the surface. Now from this observation, we can formulate the hypothesis that earthworms prefer moist, dark environments. So if we've hypothesized their preference, we can establish an aim such as to determine if earthworms respond positively or negatively to light. Now, your apparatus and material are listed in bulleted lists, just like your previous labs. You can find more about this on my previous videos. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description or at least at the end of the video. Your method is going to be written in bulleted points and logical sequences just like before. However, this time it's going to be written in present tense. Keep in mind that your method should include repetition of the experiment to get an average and you should also do a control test. If you didn't know, a control, sometimes called a control test, is the name given when the experimental procedure is performed on the apparatus without the manipulated variable. Now next up, we take a look at a list of all types of variables. There are three types of variables. Simply put, there's the manipulated variable, which is the one factor that you change in an experiment. There's a responding variable, 
which is the factor that changes and is measured as a result of the experiment. And then there's the control variables, which is any factor that you keep constant throughout the experiment so that it will not affect all your responding variable. Now you should take note that a control and a controlled variable are not the same things. They have similar names, yes, but they have very different meanings. Take a, take a second, take a second and pause the video here if you want to learn some more or just revisit it. Now turn your attention to the next section which is your expected results. Here you draw up any tables that you would use to collect results and any graphs as well if it's applicable. Don't forget to title the tables and graphs. Draw the axes. You don't have any data yet so you can't fill out the body of the table or draw the graph itself. But the tables and axes do need to be present to show how you would collect the data. So basically you're putting empty tables so that when you do get the data you just have to fill it in. The treatment of results is where you state what trends you expect to appear in your data and what those trends would mean confirming or rejecting your hypothesis. Now if the data follows your expectation then it may confirm your trend. Vice versa if it deviates from your expectation it can cause you to reject your hypothesis. Now take note that when you're talking about your hypothesis, you either accept or reject it. Do not offer alternatives at this point. Don't go off and say, for example, okay, you know what, it wasn't this, so it has to be that. No, don't offer any alternatives. Just confirm or deny your original hypothesis. So in our example, uh, if most of the earthworms went to the light, then I can only reject my hypothesis that they prefer the dark. I cannot now hypothesize that they prefer the light. There's a practical reason for this, and it's not because we are proven wrong means that the alternative is correct. How do we know that they prefer light? What about the other types of light? What if the black covering was just not sufficient to darken the area? There are many alternatives, and they are not tested within your experiment, so you can't really confirm that it's something else. You can just say that it's not what you originally thought. Lastly, you have your limitations and precautions. Just like previous laps, you can pause here to refresh your, your understandings from my previous videos. Right? Now, remember that there won't be any sources of error since you haven't done this experiment yet. And that's a wrap. Your plan and design lab is now complete. Now, look out for part 3 of this video. Right, we're going to be doing one more in the lab write-up series. It's going to be based on drawing labs. I'm going to give you all some pro tips and of course the drawing criteria. Any questions, concerns, comments, anything else you still like to know, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. We'll more than likely try to address it. More than likely. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. This has been Bio Panel. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.